So you want to learn how to mask in DaVinci Resolve and you don't know where to start. Oh. There are so many different ways that you can use masking to level up your editing ability. It just blows my mind all the time. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you three of the key things that I use on a regular basis to make my videos just stand out that little bit more. Oh, yeah. My name's Dan and you're watching Dan Vinci. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, with that all out of the way, I just want to say a huge thanks for hitting 3,000 subscribers. I don't have a clue how I've managed to get 3,000 subscribers in literally like seven videos. It just, again, my, my mind is blown. <laughs> All right then, so let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and start editing. So we have a shot now of a car logo. To create a mask, we want to go over to our node tree area like this. What I want to do first is create a new node. Alt S, we'll create a new node. Now don't worry if your node tree looks a little bit different to this. I've just created a little color grade to make it look good for this video. So with this node, what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask. So we're going to go down here to this mask button here. This is actually your mask window. If we click on this, this will open up our mask tab. As you can see, we have various different default masks that we can create. In this case, we're going to draw our mask and make a custom one. Yes, custom one, because I'm fancy like that. I need to stop with these jokes. So click on this pen, and what we want to do is go over to our subject, the thing that we want to mask out, and we want to just draw around our object, like so. I will speed this up for editing reasons so that you guys don't get bored. There we go. So now we have a circular mask around our object. Now our next step is to track the mask. Let's do this. Heading over next to the mask window, we have the track window. Click this and it will open up your tracking window. Now at the minute it doesn't have any tracking data, but we're going to soon change this. If we click on this button here, the play button here, it will track right. And as you can see, it, it, the color tab is that powerful. It's already, it's just done it like that. Obviously it will depend on your computer power. My computer is not the most powerful computer in the world, but it's certainly not the slowest. And it just did that like that. It, it, it's, it's mind blown. Again, Again. So if we click this button here and track left, it will track everything to the left because obviously we started our video in the middle here and it's just tracked left and right. So now, as you can see, we've got some lines here and that's actually our tracking data. So if we zoom in a bit, you can see the different like axes and things, the, the zoom, the tilt and the pan. And you can see here, it's just tracked that so perfectly. The wizards at DaVinci Resolve are just on another planet. <laughs> Okay, so we've now tracked the window, and what we can do now is just change the color of this if we want. So let's say I want to make this particular item a bit brighter, and we can just brighten it up like that. Obviously, we don't want to go too insane, but already that's looking a, a lot brighter. Uh, we maybe bring it down a bit, and then we can like alter this a bit, make it black and white if we wanted to. It actually kind of looks kind of cool like that. And then if we click play here, you can just see we've already made the logo black and white like that. It's the masking tool. Once you get your head around it, brilliant, brilliant tool. We can actually add effects to this node which has the mask applied to it, meaning that anything within the mask actually can be like, let's say blurred. And to do this, all we need to do is go to the top right corner, open our effects tab, and we can look for blur, like Gaussian blur here, drag that onto the node here, and it actually blurs the object. And you can obviously adjust this in the inspector tab up here to whatever you like. There you go, we've got a blurred logo. This is brilliant for, let's say you want to blur someone's number plate, or you want to blur people in the background. You can do that using this technique. There's also this blocky blur. If we drag this over and add that, this adds the kind of criminal, police investigation kind of thing. Now that's mask tracking done. Let's move on to time lapses. Okay, so I have this really cool GoPro shot of someone driving through a high street in the UK. This already looks quite cool, but obviously there are ways to make your time lapses look way more dramatic. If we jump into the color tab and we have our corrector node, this time jumping over to the masking tab, I want you to click on the circle, create a circle. And then what I want you to do is search in the effects library, zoom. Now zoom blur will appear. Drag zoom blur over to your corrector node. Now we want to invert this mask. Go down to your masking tab and click this button here. This is your invert button. Now what we can do is soften the mask a little bit. So let's go over to the soften controls here and soften it a bit, make it a bit less extreme. And if we click play now, it already looks a bit better. Now I might make that a bit stronger. I might also adjust the mask. So I'm going to adjust that a bit, do it like that. There you go. It already looks quite dramatic. It just looks like it's going 10 times faster. <laughs> Time to move on to masking within Fusion. Now I know Fusion can be scary, so do not worry. I've got a video of a waffle that I'm going to be editing in this video, just to cheer you up and make you feel a little bit less overwhelmed by the fact that we're in Fusion. So with this waffle, it actually falls over. Now, as you can see, I've got an emoji to the left of the waffle, and I want this emoji to appear behind the waffle. Hello. 
Okay, so for context, let's have a look at the node tree I currently have. Right now I have the waffle shop connected to a merge node, which has the emoji and the transform node for that emoji connected to the merge node, which then obviously leads to the media route. Obviously, if you want to put text behind something, the emoji will be the text in your use case. So let's put the emoji behind the waffle. Using your transform node, let's move the object behind the waffle like so. Then clicking on your emoji or your object that you want to mask, click on this button here and it will create a polygon mask. Now what you want to do is draw around the object that is covering the emoji or the object. Now that we've created our polygon mask, you might notice the emoji is showing. We need to just go to the top right corner in the inspector tab and click on invert. That will now invert the mask and now we can't see the emoji. The next step is to just keyframe our mask. So by default, the polygon mask has its keyframes turned on. But to double check this, just go to the top right corner in the inspector tab and click on this button here. If it's red, fantastic, you're ready to keyframe. Now let's drag along the timeline here and find a point where the object has finished moving. Let's move our keyframes to the required places, like so. Masking can be a time-consuming process. That's why I suggest you go watch my Magic Mask video. If you've got DaVinci Resolve Studio, the Magic Mask is a very powerful way that you can actually skip the keyframing process altogether and make your masking far more advanced and far more quicker. Or you could just, you know, subscribe. And there you have it, a very simple mask within Fusion. Obviously, there is so much more to masking than just these three techniques. Let me know if you want me to explore more masking down in the comments below. But yeah, that's the end of the video and I will see you next time. My name's Dan and you've watched Dan Vinci. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye.